Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so example one here, and as with um, any of my videos on any topic, example zero is most important. So if what you want is a bird's eye view and partial fraction decomposition, then uh, watch example zero. Um, and um, if what you need is like to see all the possible um, varieties of partial fraction decomposition problems you'll encounter, then watch examples one through seven. Uh, here, as our first example, we see uh, this rational expression that we now must turn into the sum of uh, two, it will be in this case, rational expressions. So we're gonna turn this one rational expression um, uh, into the sum of two rational expressions. And this is what the partial fraction decomposition process does, which is it takes a given rational expression and it writes it as a sum of two or more rational expressions, yeah? Okay, cool. Now the denominator of one of our rational expressions here is going to be um, one of the factors of this and the denominator of this will be the other factor of this now We know by difference of squares one of my favorite things in the world is I've said in many videos that x squared minus 1 uh, factors is um, x plus 1 times x minus 1, right? And so we can write x minus 1 here. We could have written x plus 1 here instead doesn't matter uh, Now we have to write x plus 1 here. Yeah, Okay, I wanted to get fancy by doing the less natural thing and writing x minus 1 here. Um, for most of you, it's probably tempting to write x plus 1 here, and you could have. You, if you did that here, which is if you wrote x plus 1 here, you just have to write x minus 1 there, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, uh, whenever uh, the denominators here um, are linear in form, uh, maybe uh, from having watched example 0 or maybe from what you remember in class, you'll know that the numerator here must assume a constant form. So in other words, uh, when this is a first degree, this numerator is uh, zero degree, and that means this numerator is a constant, because zero degree is like a constant times x to the zero, right? Okay, cool, all right. Um, anyway, uh, basic is when this denominator is linear, the numerator must be a constant. So this two is linear, so the numerator is some other constant. And a and b may be um, equal, but um, very unlikely that they'll be equal, yeah? Okay, anyway, uh, we put a plus sign now, and uh, we have to now force this right-hand side to uh, be the same as this left-hand side. Well, to make the right-hand side look like the left-hand side, we need to first get common denominators. So that would mean that we multiply here by x plus 1 right here and then by x plus 1. And so, and multiplying by x plus 1 divided by x plus 1, we've multiplied by 1, and therefore we didn't alter this quantity a divided by x minus 1. Yeah, okay. But uh, we're on our way to getting a common denominator, and that's why we chose to multiply this here, top and bottom, by x plus 1. Now, um, here we're going to multiply by x minus 1, top and bottom. So, there's that, and there's this. Yeah, okay, cool. Now, um, we... Uh, simplify the right hand side specifically since uh, this here and this here are now uh, the same and specifically they're the same as x squared minus 1 we can write just one denominator right so let's write that denominator and I'm gonna choose to write x minus 1 times x plus 1 which is the same as x plus 1 times x minus 1 as x squared minus 1 uh, which is what it equals right which is what this equals and what this equals right okay cool and then in the numerator, we have a times um, x plus 1, and then uh, plus b times um, x minus 1, right? Okay, cool. So that's what the numerator is. Okay, um, but this here, which is the same as this here, still equal to this here. So on the left side, we have x divided by x, divided by, um, x squared uh, minus 1. Okay, now... <laughs> Uh, we need the left side to equal the right side if we have succeeded in the decomposition. And uh, since this denominator is the same as this denominator, to make the left side here equal to the right side, we only require that the numerator on the left be equal to the numerator on the right. That is, we require x to equal a times um, x plus 1 and then plus uh, b times x minus 1. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, um, since this is an inter intermediate step that we no longer need, I'm going to get rid of it because I'm going to need the space. But yeah, there is that. This is gone now. Now, there are two options to proceed forward from where we're at. So from here, right, you can do two things. 
one is a bit more algebra and the other is a bit more clever. So uh, let's do the algebra first. So if you chose to do algebra, the left side is x. Uh, notice that that's 1 times x. And the right side, if you distribute a first, you get ax uh, plus a. And then uh, you get plus bx uh, minus b. And if you so chose, you could write this as um, ax plus um, bx and then plus um, a minus b. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, um, further, you could write this by factoring an x here as um, a plus b times x uh, plus um, a minus b. So since you have two terms here, make uh, this x have two terms. And so that would mean we write it as 1x plus 0. So comparing this here to um, this here, it's pretty clear that um, a plus b has to equal 1. So we deduce that a plus b has to equal 1 because um, the coefficient of x here is 1. And so we need the coefficient of x here to be 1. And then we need a minus b to be 0. And so we need a minus b to um, equal 0. And then now to find out what a and b are, you just have to solve a system of um, two equations and two unknowns. And this is a pretty straightforward uh, system to solve. So, for example, we could stack them and uh, subtract the two equations or actually add the two equations. And when we do, if we add them, uh, if we go plus, we get this resulting equation. And let's um, make some space. So slide this to the left. But yeah, we get this um, resulting equation, which is we get 2a, right? 2a is equal to 1. And... Um, that means that uh, a is equal to one half, and um, since a minus b is equal to zero, or since a plus b is equal to one, rather, this is the easier one to think about. If a is one half, clearly b has to be one half, and so that's just substituting um, a here um, uh, instead of a here, substituting substituting a one half, and then doing some arithmetic. You get it. You get it. Um, so b has to equal one half also. And um, so we have a equals one half and b equals one half, which means that the correct decomposition of this is uh, equal to it's equal to one half divided by um, x minus one, uh, and then plus one half divided by um, x plus one. So apparently, if you find common denominators here and simplify this, it will turn into x divided by x squared minus 1. It's pretty easy to see because we're going to have to multiply this top and bottom by um, x plus 1, right? And when we do, we're going to get we're going to get 1 half x plus 1 half. And we're going to have to multiply this here at top and bottom by x minus 1. And when we do, we're going to get in the numerator 1 half x minus 1 half. The plus 1 half from here and the minus 1 half will cancel. Um, and then the 1 half x from here and the 1 half x from here will turn into the x. And obviously the denominator, since we got there by finding common denominators, the denominator, the denominator will be um, x minus 1 times x plus 1, which is x squared minus 1. So basically I just did the check for you. But this is one way to proceed once you get to this spot. Um, and I said that this is the algebra way. Uh, and I also mentioned that there is a clever way. So why don't we look at the clever way? We like clever, right? Okay, the clever way is nice. Um, so, since this equation has to hold true for any x, why don't we strategically pick x values that simplify this equation? For example, if we let x equal negative 1, we know that this is going to be 0. Now, since, again, um, this holds true for all x, when we say x equals negative 1, we have to put it, a negative 1 everywhere we see an x, right? And so, putting a negative 1 for this x, we get negative 1 equals, and then this here is going to be a times negative 1 plus 1, so a times 0. That's gone. And then we get plus b times negative 1 minus 1, so that's negative 2b. And clearly, dividing by negative 2 on both sides of this equation, we'd find that b is equal to 1 half. Isn't that nice? And then, um, letting x equal positive 1, uh, this left side will be 1, right, um, is equal to, and then since x is positive 1 this time, we get 2a in that part. So 2a and then plus um, x is 1 we chose because we knew that this part is going to turn into 0. So b times 1 minus 1 is b times 0. So nothing plus 0. 
So we get uh, 1 is equal to 2a, which means that a is equal to 1 half. And so I know a lot of you are saying, this was much faster, why didn't you show us this first? Maybe because I knew you'd stop watching the video if I showed you this first um, and not want to see the other way. But yeah, either is fine, it's a matter of preference, and um, yeah, cool. All right, keep watching, and this is example one.